So the word I'll be talking about today is mansplaining, which is the explanation of something, anything, by a man, typically to a woman, in a belittling, patronizing, condescending way. The term itself, uh, relatively speaking, compared to all the terms, all the words that I've been exploring on this channel, the term itself is relatively new. It was coined in early 2000s after an article, an essay, was published by the American writer and thinker Rebecca Solnit. That essay was titled, Men Explain Things to Me. And after the article was published, people reacted, people made comments, and during that process, this term, mansplaining, was coined. So it's a colloquialism rather than a formal word. The word itself might be recent, but the phenomenon is quite old and it is very universal. Why? Because patriarchy itself is universal and unfortunately it's deeply rooted. Have you been mansplained before? I have been mansplained so many times in my life. I don't even know where to begin. But I want to share a few examples with you. Once, I never forget, I saw this literary critic, male literary critic, um, who started reviewing one of my earlier novels by saying, let's see what our daughter has written this time. Now, the guy who's calling me our daughter is my age, and I surely am not his daughter. But immediately by doing that, he puts you down there and himself up there and then starts his review. Another time, again, I can never forget this, I had this male journalist give me a long speech about um, what is wrong with novelists and novels today, how contemporary fiction is not good enough, how compared to Dostoevsky and the giants of Russian literature, today's writers are not writing anything, it's just all peanuts. You know, and this guy was telling me, um, for such a long time, what was wrong about novels and novelists in the contemporary era. At the end of this long speech, I asked him then what kind of novels do you enjoy? You know, who, which kind of, what kind of novels do you like reading? And in response, he said to me, oh, I don't read fiction. So you don't read fiction and you're lecturing me about what's wrong uh, with regards to the novels, contemporary fiction of today. Where does that kind of arrogance come? Another time, one of my earlier novels, The Forty Rules of Love, which tells the story of Rumi and Shems, when this book was published in Turkey, I had so many male experts pontificating about how to write on, uh, on Rumi or how to write on Sufism and Shems of Tabriz, etc. Now, I'm not claiming to be an expert on Rumi, but obviously, Obviously, before writing this novel, before writing about Shams of Tabriz and the historical novel, clearly I did so much research and, you know, you study, you read, you feel an emotional connection, not only an intellectual connection. Of course, learning is endless and we should always keep learning and revising what we know and criticizing ourselves. But the assumption that they automatically know better because they happen to be male and you happen to be female is so wrong. Another time, uh, again, one of my earlier novels, The Architect's Apprentice, when this book was published, I remember very clearly at a book festival, a young male listener, he stood up and he again lectured me for a very long time about the architect Sinan and Ottoman architecture. And when the presenter asked him if he had read the novel and enjoyed it, he said he hadn't read it yet. So you haven't even read the novel yet, but you're talking about it for so long with that kind of criticism. Um, another time I listened to um, a male journalist talk about motherhood. I remember very vividly the day I listened to another man talk about postpartum depression and how it was all in my head. You know, if you just think differently, postpartum depression will disappear. I know women who have been uh, mansplained by their husbands or boyfriends about period pains, period cramps, and so on. So there's so many examples out there. But what we need to question is, how does this work? 
You know, why does this keep happening again and again? Sometimes with good intentions, you know, the men who are mansplaining do not necessarily do it out of bad intentions. They just automatically assume that they know better than you, right? So it also puts women down. It puts women in their place. It tells you because you happen to be a woman, this is your limits. No matter how much you might have researched that subject, how many years you might have spent studying that subject, you will never be good enough because of your gender. I also want to tell you that sometimes mansplaining takes uh, more indirect forms. So it manifests itself in the form of constant interruptions. Like when a woman is speaking, she is interrupted very often. I remember many times with uh, friends, you know, in big groups, when men are speaking, they speak louder and they, they interrupt a lot. So as a woman, you want to have your voice heard and you, you start speaking louder and louder. I remember those moments when you feel like your throat is bruised because you also have to constantly shout. So that kind of talking over, interrupting can also be a form of mansplaining. But my point is, Mansplaining is happening all the time in every aspect of daily life and we need to be aware of it. We have to amplify the voices of women, the voices of minorities, sexual minorities, cultural minorities. When we are speaking to give more voice or to give more space to other women in the room, especially to younger women in the room, is so important. Why? Because younger women are mansplained even more often than older women. The thing about patriarchy is that a woman is usually not respected uh, and, and is not listened to until the day she's deemed to be old in the eyes of the society. Uh, again, coming from a patriarchal society, I do know that we respect our matriarchs, we respect our grandmothers. Grandmothers are not regarded as women. They are defeminized. They are desexualized in the eyes of the society. So until a woman reaches that point and becomes a matriarch, becomes a grandmother, she will be interrupted, talked down to, belittled, patronized and pontificated constantly. We need to be aware of this. And I think it is much harder for younger women to fight against this. So it's very important for us to give more voice to younger women, to give more voice particularly to younger women coming from disadvantaged backgrounds. And there's one more thing I want to leave you with, if I may. I used to go to schools a lot in Turkey, and one thing stayed with me very vividly. If you speak to a six-year-old, seven-year-old Turkish child, they are no different than a six- or seven-year-old Canadian or French or Norwegian child. They all have so much confidence, creativity and chutzpah. And at that age, girls are just as confident, if not even more confident than boys. But then I would go and give talks to older students who have gone through puberty, you know, who, who have gone through teenage years. And the difference is remarkable. You know, what happened to those young people who had so much courage and confidence? Why don't they want to speak up and speak out anymore? You know, if you ask a room full of younger students. Is there anyone here who would like to become an artist someday? So many hands go up. But ask the same question to a room full of older students. Very few hands go up. Why? Because as a society, we teach young people never to stand out, always to blend in, be normal, be like everyone else. And especially we teach to our girls um, to be timid. We teach them that they will be judged how they sit, maybe the length of their skirts, how they talk, whether they laugh out loud or not, even their voice, their intonation, everything will be judged. So little by little, we teach young people to internalize this kind of mansplaining, which doesn't only come from individuals, but also comes from the society at large. If we know how mansplaining works, how it functions in our daily lives, we can fight against it. But primarily what I'm trying to say is it all starts with awareness. It all starts with sharing our stories. Please share with me your stories of mansplaining, how you have been mansplained before. When we hear each other's voices, when we're aware of the problem, we can fight it better and stronger.